Hey y'all, Pancake here. Universal's brand new theme park, Epic Universe, is inching closer and closer to its opening next year in 2025. And today, we're going to take a closer look at some new aerial images captured above the construction site. We will see how the main entrance in Celestial Park is progressing, see some major elements about to be installed, and also see some incredible animatronics that were just revealed. So come along and let's check it all out. It's been a little bit since we checked in with what's going on over at Epic Universe. And you know, most of my past videos on it have actually been more about what each land will entail and featured some concept art and visuals. But today I'm very excited to take a peek at some actual images taken from the air, all thanks to everyone's favorite aerial photographer, Bio Reconstruct on X or Twitter. Uh, please, before we take a look at these incredible shots, take a moment and go give him a follow. He has really truly been a source of insight into all the construction that's happening at Epic Universe, but also at any of the Orlando theme parks. He just brings us some incredible shots. So please go give him a follow. So let's take a look at some of these images. I just wanna admire the scope, size, and detail of this construction site. I just, I look at this and I'm in awe of how they keep this all organized. I would just be so lost, you know? I have so much respect for the engineers, designers, and creatives behind all of these theme park projects. Now, in the middle, we have Celestial Park. On the left side of the image, we can see Super Nintendo World. On the top left, Dark Universe. The top right, we have the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Ministry of Magic. And then finally, How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke on the right. But without further ado, let's dive a little bit closer. Let's begin with the front of the park. We can see that a majority of the landscape when you first approach the security and turnstile area is actually complete. You can see some of the different pavement designs in place with not much more to go until this area is fully paved. Now, the one design that piques my interest is the one right in front of the Kronos. Now, is it just me or does this look a lot like the beginning of the Imagination Pavilion emblem from Epcot? I'm thinking we maybe have some Figment fans over at Universal Creative. Let me know in the comments though, what do you think? Because <laughs> I don't know, this, this looks exactly like that logo. Here we can see a nice detailed view of the Kronos and all of these emblems you see in here, we believe will be in motion spinning slowly. And I just can't wait to see this in motion as you approach the entryway. Now, once we walk through the Kronos, we will have this gorgeous entry into Celestial Park. We can see the creeks starting to get some blue paint in their paths, along with some rocks getting a layer of purplish blue hued paint. You know, this area is going to be incredible and just so relaxing. I love the idea of walking into this park and then getting to explore through these pathways that crisscross over this moving water. Just imagine how peaceful it's going to be with the sound of the creeks and upon further view, we can see that the goddess statue has been installed and is currently getting some detailed paint and weathering work. Now, I just can't wait to see the finished product. Once it's done, I think it's going to be a beautiful, classy icon once you enter as you look over Celestial Park. Celestial Park is coming along and starting to even get some of its trees and even grass laid in some areas. We can see a line of fountains at the base of these basins, and upon closer look, we can actually even see some tile work that has begun that appears to have even like an iridescent look to it, which I really like. Here we can start to see the celestial spin carousel is just about every bit of its gorgeous and detailed roof paneling installed. And towards the bottom of this photo, it appears they have some foam blocks being installed to add some like elevation around the lake in front of Celestial Spin, which I love that idea. I love elevation in a park, especially this gardens area. I think that's gonna add a lot to this. We can see some color is also being added to the splash pad. We can see tons of fountain heads installed within the main fountain that will be the congregating area for the nighttime spectacular they will be putting on here. There will most likely be a fountain show paired with fireworks that will shoot off from behind the Helios Grand Hotel. It looks like they've actually started adding some AstroTurf surface around one section of the seating area. So maybe they anticipate people being able to lounge around before the show begins. And this will make it a lot more comfortable. And I, I really actually like this idea, almost like the hub grass at the Magic Kingdom. And you know, this holds a lot less heat than cement does. So this could actually be a genius move, making the entire seating area just AstroTurf. 
You know, work is coming along on Stardust Racers with the main Comet statue still behind scaffolding. Now the area right in front of the Helios Grand Hotel is starting to see some trees planted and its Greek god installed as well. This means there will be two gods anchoring the front and back of Celestial Park. We can really get a great view of this one here. Now let's move over to Dark Universe and take a peek into some of the progress being made over there. In my opinion, this land seems to be the one that is the furthest along, at least from an outside view. You know, all of the pavement looks like it's been poured throughout the entire land, and there are tons and tons of trees and foliage spread throughout the land. It just makes my heart happy. This looks amazing. I mean, this place, minus some paintwork on the exterior of the Frankenstein Manor, looks to be very close to being completed, actually. The entry portal is getting some finishing touches, but man, does it look epic. Excuse the pun. I just love the look of these branches enveloping the rocks. We can see on the back side of this, as you enter, what looks to be a crypt that has its theming finished. And once you venture further into the land, you reach the village and all of the scaffolding is down from all of these village shops, which is great. There's some incredible detail to be seen all over this area. It is looking fantastic. Just things like this little tiny house perched up on this wall. I don't know what the heck it's supposed to be. Maybe like a stone birdhouse or something. What I would love to see is like a creepy animatronic crow perched up in there. If you ever went on Splash Mountain before, you know, those like vultures that they had. I feel like that would be really cool. Like I mentioned earlier, the manor has some scaffolding up around the center area since it's just received its central turret. And even with that in the way, you can really get a sense of the scale of this building and how it's going to just tower over the land. It looks super ominous and foreboding. Now the Curse of the Werewolf attraction looks to be just about complete, which is insane to think about. You can see all of the landscaping in place, and all that seems to be remaining really is some of the tarps that will be draped throughout the exterior portions of the queue. We can see in this photo what looks to be the entry into the attraction with three different signs, most likely for the standby line, express pass lane, and a single rider line. I love the look of these wagons they have placed in front, especially the one that features probably what will be the attraction's main sign with a werewolf sculpture that's like protruding from it. I think that just looks awesome. We can see that the ride still continues to do some testing, and this time with some weighted dummies. So I wouldn't say that we're that far out actually from seeing maybe some team members testing in it themselves. Now the Burning Blade Tavern looks to be complete from the outside as well, including all of its landscaping, which I must say looks incredible. We still have not seen them testing the fire coming out from the blades, but it's only a matter of time, and I cannot wait to see that, especially at night. So bio. Get some photos of that, please. <laughs> Might need to do some night flights. All right, now let's head over to Super Nintendo World where the Donkey Kong area has seen some huge developments. In the main Super Nintendo World area, we can see that things are progressing well, but there's still a lot left to be done. Of all the lands, I feel like this section still has the most remaining that needs to be complete, but it is starting to show through some signs that we're getting closer and closer. In this shot, we can see that the Yoshi ride has all of its vehicles installed right now. They have it covered just to preserve some of that paint, but tons of the cliffside around it has its theming and it looks like it has been painted. This is starting to look awesome. Bowser's castle is also almost complete minus the very front tip of it. And this will be the entrance to the Mario Kart ride. Now let's get to some of the exciting parts within the Donkey Kong Country area. When you first walk into this land, you can see a plane constructed that will probably be a gift shop. Now this is what gets me super excited about the Nintendo Land are these colors that we're gonna get. These blue stones just pop out so well. We can see tons of the theming has gone in, including these wooden spikes protruding from the rocks that the carts will appear to jump over. It's gonna be a really neat effect. Some huts are being constructed towards the front of this area, and these are believed to be a meet and greet location where you will get to meet Donkey and Diddy Kong. We can see what seems to be the entryway into the minecart attraction is being constructed. Here we can see the peak of the minecart attraction is getting its facade, and this will be where there is a fountain cascading down from that cliff, which I think is gonna add a lot of kinetic energy to this area. We can see that the incline for the minecart attraction looks to just to be about complete with tons of bamboo trees planted in order to block some of the backstage areas from guest view. And finally, we can see one of the ride vehicles 
queued up, ready to be dispatched onto the track with what looks to be a Diddy Kong animatronic installed, which is so exciting. This is awesome to see that these elements are starting to go into this land, and that means we are that much closer to this opening. All right, now let's move on over to the wizarding world of Harry Potter, Ministry of Magic. The land is coming along nicely, and from this top aerial view, we can see the Golden Phoenix being staged nearby that will eventually get placed on the backside of that arc in the land. From this view, we can see the formation of the tent that will be the entryway to the stage show called Le Cirque Arcanou. And if you want to know more about this show and the rest of what will be featured within this land, please check out my video on my channel I did a couple weeks ago. I dive into everything that this land is going to offer. We can see that they have begun planting trees throughout the land in addition to some murals being painted on tons of the building facades. I really enjoy this because there is someone literally going in there painting this on by hand themselves, which is awesome. Now here we can see the fountain near the entrance to the land's main attraction has been installed and it looks to have received a statue on it as well. Now if anyone recognizes the statue, please let me know in the comments because even though I have watched all the Harry Potter films, I really don't know who this is, especially with this cover on top. Now here we see the entryway into the Ministry of Magic attraction. You can see some support structures that are actually waiting to have some elements looks like installed on top of them. And the building also has received some paintwork along with some ornate stonework. I think this is coming along really nicely. Some slow progress is being made on the stairway to nowhere. And this is that area, if you did catch my last video, that I talked about that force perspective that they're going to be doing with some actual locations from Paris. Uh, again, check out my other video if you want to hear more about that, but I'm really excited to see what this area looks like finished. And finally, we take a look at the darker, more sinister area of this wizarding world, which to me looks a lot like Diagon Alley, but regardless, this area looks to be almost done with its exterior theming. And that completes our peek into this land. On to the next. Next up, let's take a peek at How to Train Your Dragon Isle of Burke, which is one of the more bigger updates. Again, when you look at this wider aerial, there is just so much going on in this photo. There's so much progress, but also so much left to complete. And I did wanna point out before we move on in this photo, you can see the cement pad down here. This is where we believe the drone dragons will be staging and taking off from. Again, if you didn't know about these drone dragons, I talked about it in my latest Epic Universe video. So again, go over there and check it out. There's a lot I covered. <laughs> Now starting out at the entry portal into the land, we see its main icon is just about finished with some scaffolding still remaining, but I think this beacon looks incredible. As you enter into the land, you will of course be greeted with these two statues that are quite large and will both have actually a consistent flame of fire blowing from their mouths. I just love the multi-element nature of all of these lands and these statues are looking so gorgeous. And actually in this photo, you can see a person standing next to them, so you can get a really good true sense of the scale of these. Of course, this basin that the man is standing in will be filled with water eventually. And then moving a little deeper into the land, we can see this miniature cliffside that has been built, getting some of its grass and moss work installed, as well as a lot of these dragon huts. Now, we can't see any yet, but eventually there will be dragon tails and heads installed in these huts as if there were dragons sleeping within them. Now, I do hope that some of the ones they have poking out have some kind of movement to it, you know, like a tail wagging or maybe like eyes blinking on it so that it really sells that effect, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. We can also see tons of paint and detail work happening to the basin where that lake will be and some really neat theming details on the docks where these boats are parked at. Now moving on to what will basically be a glorified playground, we can see this area has made some great progress with tons of the support structures in place waiting to receive their flooring. You know, I don't have kids yet, but I do have nieces and tons of friends who do. And the one thing they always say is it's sometimes nice to have an area where their kids can actually just run around and get some of that pent up energy out after, you know, like standing in lines all day at the park. So I really think that this area is going to be very popular. Now the Mead Hall restaurant entrance and mountainside still have some work to be done, such as adding some final paint and foliage, but 
man, how cool do these giant statues on the left and right look. And those little basins that sit in front of each of them will have large flames rising from them. They really are bringing tons of fire to this land, which is awesome because, I mean, come on, it's based off of a movie about dragons. You gotta have fire. Now, the land's one attraction that will probably be the most family-friendly, but still exciting, has seen some incredible progress, and that ride is called Fire Drill. On this ride, you will board a boat and basically be putting out fake fires in order to score points. Now, like, think of this as like Astro Blaster over at Magic Kingdom, but outdoors with water being your ammunition. Now, this photo you see here was from back in March, and here's a photo from just the other week from the exact same perspective. It is incredible how much they have gotten done within the past couple months. Most, if not all of the show elements have been installed and all of the boats are sitting within the ride path. Now, this probably isn't how close the boats will sit in front of each other, but man, what a colorful and beautiful attraction this is going to be. My only complaint is it does seem to be a little short, but maybe the boats will just be very slow moving, which will make the experience feel longer. We'll have to see, but regardless, this is looking awesome. Now finally, let's move on to the main attraction of the land, Hiccup's Wing Gliders. The entrance to the attraction is about to receive its paint, but has an incredible wooden sculpture of a dragon head installed. And on the right, you can see the gift shop slash exit to the attraction, which has received most of its paint. Here in this photo, you can see what will be the attraction's second launch area, which will also double up as a show scene and upon closer look, you can see some dragon eggs positioned around some of the rock work, some cracked open and some not, and it is thought that these will crack open as you approach them in the ride vehicle, and then these animatronic dragons that you see behind the rocks will rise up, and uh, I don't know what else will happen in it, but I'm excited to see it, and I'm glad that we're getting two launches on this coaster. Now this next update in this ride, to me, is the most exciting for this land. What we are looking at here is the location of the first launch for the attraction, but also where the first show scene will be located, where we will get our first look at Hiccup and Toothless. In just this past week, we finally got the reveal of the Toothless animatronic, and boy oh boy, does it look awesome. Here you can see Toothless with his claw on a button that will trigger a giant stone weight to drop, and that will be what is supposed to propel our vehicle into the first fast launch. There also will be a hiccup animatronic in this area as well, spinning a wheel that will turn this barrel that you see on the left, which has that stone weight attached to it. And I think this is going to be a really clever show scene, and I cannot wait to see Toothless and Hiccup in action in this ride. Well, there you have it. There was a peek into some of the construction going down at Epic Universe. You know, it really is impressive just how far along they are. And before you know it, we will be walking through these lands. Now let me know in the comments below, which land are you looking forward to the most? You know, Dark Universe to me has been the one that I have been the most excited for for a long, long time. But I gotta be honest, with all of these updates to the How to Train Your Dragon area, I think I'm starting to lean more towards that land, so. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Once again, huge, huge shout out to BioReconstruct on X or Twitter. He has been a godsend with all of these aerial images that he's been providing for the community. So again, please go give him a follow. If you have not already, you will not regret it. And of course, I want to thank you all for watching this video. And if you enjoy this, please give it a like below. And also don't be afraid to subscribe if you want to see more videos about Epic Universe like this in the future. That's gonna do it for this one. I will catch you in the next one, and remember to stay golden.